I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're delighted to welcome back one of our favorite guests. Her name is Laura Burke. She is renowned for her gripping Jolene murder series. She has an uncanny ability to craft thrillers with unexpected twists, with titles like The Model Murders, The Toy Store Murders, and The Duffel Bag Murders. They all keep readers on the edge of their seats, eagerly flipping those pages, anticipating each suspenseful ending. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here again today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Prime 7 Media for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel. Laura, welcome back to Spotlight. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be here. Good thank to you. see you. Oh, my pleasure. Good to see you today. Uh, this is right up my alley, the Jolene murder series, because I love private detectives. I'm a huge fan of Raymond Chandler and Philip Marlowe, but Jolene's a little bit different. First of all, she's a woman and she's been doing this since she was a young girl in a way, uh, been intrigued by murders. So what, let's give the folks at home the big picture as to what the Jolene series is about. Well, Jolene is... Um, um, very interested in solving cases. Her uncle is a private detective and uh, she got into the private detective business when she got out of school and she helped solve the murder mysteries. So now she's working part-time with the FBI solving cold cases. And that's where it gets very interesting. Um, we have a new one that's coming out probably by the end of this month, which is the duffel bag murders as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm looking forward to sending that to you so you can try and figure out who the killer is. <laughs> Sounds good. How much of Jolene is you? Well, now that's really not a fair question because... <laughs> <laughs> I was a private investigator as well for about 15 years. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. See, I talked to you um, last time and that was not a fact we brought out. That's interesting. Right. And um, I, I retired from that and I thought, well, writing would be a good way to express my feelings about all of these killers. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. So tell us a little bit about your experience as a PI. Was it mostly matrimonial stuff? What kind of stuff was it? I kind of stayed away from the romance, um, although I did write a romance book just recently, <laughs> which was a short story. Um, it intrigues me that people are so thoughtless. Um, they leave so many clues and they don't realize it. And it just takes that special person to pick up on those clues. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it was um, theft, robbery, uh, a couple of threatening cases where the spouse was very abusive to the wife, um, different things like that was cases that I worked on. Um, uh, a thing that people don't realize is that spousal abuse is one of the biggest things in the United States and probably the world. Mm. And it's not just the men. It can also be the women. Yeah, which is fascinating because you wouldn't think a little tiny woman would have control over 160, 175 pound man, right. but it, somehow it turns the tables. <laughs> yeah. And also it, it's kind of like an escalating thing. She hits him. He hits back. She's 120 pounds. He's 180 pounds and it's worse. So yeah. it's a, a vicious cycle. And yes, both parties are guilty. Men abuse women, women abuse men, they abuse each other. It's a bad story. But this is your business. You were a private detective. You did uh, investigate stuff like this. And now you're writing about stuff like this. Which is the first Jolene book that folks should start with? The Model Murders. Okay. And That's I love the part. cover of The Model Murders. It's awesome. And uh, tell the folks a little bit about The Model Murders. Um, Jolene got fascinated with finding... Uh, on articles in the newspaper about missing girls and they were never recovered and she would cut it out of the paper and she was keeping scrapbooks and one day she was in a hurry and she left them on her bed and her father saw them 
So he kind of, you know, was questioning her. Why did she have these scrapbooks with all these articles in it about these missing girls? Mm -hmm. And so she went on to tell him that, you know, one day she was going to solve that case, that she knew there had to be a killer out there. But she couldn't figure out how because the police and the FBI had no clues whatsoever to go on. And that's where she comes into play. And one of her friends took a job and disappeared. And that's when she gets really involved in trying to solve these murders. Very interesting. Now, is it set in the present day or is it set in the past? What's the time frame of the book? Um, the time frame of the book is when Jolene was very young, probably a sophomore in school. And then she solves the case when she's like um, second year of college Right, is when her friend went missing. And that's when she was able to solve it. Criminologists nowadays have a lot of tools at their disposal. It seems like there are cameras everywhere. They can follow you from your front door on your doorbell, down the street on highway cams, through the toll booth, right up to the murder scene. So in some ways, investigators have it easier today. Do you purposely move your uh, timeline of your stories to eras where it wasn't so digital, where it was more like, you know, good old fashioned police work? Yes. And, uh, you know, nothing beats footwork. Yeah. You know, walking the beat and finding and looking for the clues. And yes, today in the modern world, it's a lot easier. But you take some of these people out there that may commit these crimes. Um, they're just as up to date on all of this technology as we are. And they know how to get around those cameras. They know how to uh, avoid being followed and, and such. So it makes it harder for the police and the FBI to actually pin down somebody. Exactly. And before they can track somebody on a camera, they have to have an idea of who they're tracking. So exactly. that involves good old fashioned police work as well. I think this Jolene series would be such a terrific uh, series. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Agent Starling in uh, Silence of the Lambs in a way, mm -hmm. because you've got this very you know, strong heroine as the investigator. Have you thought about this as a uh, TV series or a series of movies, perhaps? Yes, and I think you would be excellent as one of her partners. Well, I'd appreciate you know. that. I'd love to be. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've always wanted I, to be either Sam Spade or Philip Marlowe. So, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I sent you a letter along with um, uh, Black Orchid. Yep. You would be excellent as the main character in that movie. You just have awesome. to learn how to whittle. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Uh, that would be a great thing. And uh, we'll have to try to pitch that to some Hollywood producers. But only All if right. I star in it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. I. I. This um, series. She's now officially uh, an FBI consultant, mm -hmm. uh, and she has been hired by the FBI. And she has two major FBI agents that she works with to solve cold cases. And when I did the research on this, I found that there were over 130,000 cold cases in the basement of the major FBI region. Amazing. And that's a lot of cold cases. And nobody looks at them because they're all cold cases. And we have so much crime going on now. There's not time for somebody to look into these. And so, the, vic the uh, victims also have to have advocates to push the police to do their jobs, right? Right, right. And, you know, how many times have you seen it on TV where the police just kind of push people away and don't want to hear from them? And even though they're annoying, mm -hmm. they don't go away. And then finally, the police say, well, you know, we can't do nothing else. Right. Exactly. And that's not really an answer for the families of these victims. Yeah, so um, they go into the basement in a box and it gets sealed up and that's where they remain.
Exactly. Have you been following the Long Island serial killer who was recently arrested, uh, Rex Heuerman? Yes. Yeah, it's a fascinating case. And that was a cold case as well, where yeah. they reconvened a special task force to take a look. And major clues were overlooked from 13 years ago. They had yes. a description of a very unique car, a suspect who was six foot six and 300 pounds. <laughs> and they knew from cell phone pinging approximately where the uh, suspect lived. And still, it took 13 years to catch him. And God knows how many bodies were left in the wake if this is yeah. indeed the man responsible for the murders. Yes, that's true. Yeah. And and that's just like these cases that I've got Jolene working on. These are all cold cases. Um, and there was a lot of clues that she found in the files and by investigating it herself to give to Agent Hines, who is the chief investigator. Mm -hmm. um, and they were able to, you know, come up with who did it and how they did it. Uh, but that's that's one of the things that we have a problem with in our society today is the police are so busy mm -hmm. and the FBI is so busy. And there's a lot of things that are overlooked or they're just brushed aside to say, well, we'll get to it later and later never comes. Exactly. And particularly if it is a poor victim, a minority victim, a sex worker, those people tend not to have advocates. They tend not to have a voice in the system and their murders tend to get overlooked or pushed to the wayside. Are your crimes and your books loosely based on real life murders? No, I cannot tell you that. <laughs> I'd be giving away my trade secrets. Exactly, exactly. You know, the, the hook that I um, I go by is I kill people for a living. <laughs> and uh, one of my friends said, well, you should add something to that. And I said, well, what should I add? And said, that, did you enjoy it? <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. That's very funny. You are such a prolific writer. How many books have you written so far? What's your latest book and what are you working on now? Well, uh, 14 books Wow, is out. Um, and the one that I'm working on now is The Boy in the Box. And what's that about? It's about a body that was dug up from a graveyard that was an unmarked grave. And there was nothing there but the skeleton. And the culprits that dug him up couldn't figure out how to get him back without getting caught. So they put him in a paper box and they put him on somebody's doorstep. Oh. And that's what I'm working on now. Well, that sounds great. That sounds great. Your books are great. Black Orchid is great. Uh, I told you I was intrigued by that one just by its locale. It's set in Watch Hill, Rhode Island, as I recall. Right. Mm -hmm. And love that book. Love the Jolene series and this boy in the box. Sounds like it's very unique. If you were to pick any one of your books, and it's like picking amongst children, which book would you like to see made into a movie first? Well, I don't like my children, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's just a joke. I do love I my kids. Um, Although I, it I is tough to love adult children sometimes. Yeah. I completely understand. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, mm. I would like to see Black Orchid made into a movie first. Yeah. And like I said, I would like for you to play the lead. Well, I would love that. It's such a great story. It's a chilling story. And it's such a juxtaposition where you have this idyllic summer town, Watch Hill, Rhode Island. That's where Taylor Swift lives, if uh, any of the viewers are uh, wanting to know more about the area. It's an amazing town. And Laura has crafted an amazing murder mystery or death mystery, I should say, with this book, Black Orchid. Laura, before we leave you today, anything else you want to tell the audience or let them know about your work? Well, I just, I need sales. So please yeah. look for me. And if you don't find me, um, look me up online because I'm online, I'm on Facebook um, and I would love to hear from you. Absolutely, absolutely. And the links will be below this interview. So you can click on the links. You can order any of Laura's books, whether it's the Jolene Murder Series or Black Orchid or one of the other 14 wonderful books she has crafted out of her lifelong experience, which included five years as a private eye, which is very impressive. Laura, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Crawford. And I look forward to speaking to you again. Me too. Look forward to talking to you when the next book is out. Okay. And to, folks at, okay. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight. Thank you.